Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In this episode of the .NET Show, we're going to take a look at the entry point for every MAUI application, MAUIprogram.cs. I'll show you all the things you can do to configure your app, but today we're going to focus on just three things. Adding a service with dependency injection, using a logging provider, and using custom fonts on every platform where your MAUI app can run. As far as I'm concerned, we're just getting started with MAUI, so this is a good time to cover the basics. Configuring your MAUI app with MAUI program is coming right up on the .NET Show. So I'm starting with my repo at github.com slash carlfranklin slash Maui program. And you should start here because this is where you can step through all the code that I've shown you and look at the screenshots and all that stuff. So in this module, we're going to cover what's in that Maui program class in every Maui application, how it works, why it works, and how we can configure services. And in this episode, we're focusing on fonts and logging. So I found this, and it, it's not new. It's been out for a couple of years, but I found this new to me, open source tool that lets you view your Android screen on your Windows, Mac, or Linux desktop. Skr copy, like screen copy. So you can go here, and there are uh, download links for Windows, Mac and Linux. So I have my Android phone connected via USB, so I use this command and it works really well. So that's what I'm going to use to show you my Android phone today. So I have linked to another website that gives you more detailed instructions on how to use Skr Copy. So here's the skinny Maui applications are bootstrapped using a host. And the host allows applications to be initialized from a single location, as well as configuring services, libraries, and resources, just like any other .NET Core app. The host is also where you do things like dependency injection, configuration, and handle app shutdown. But in the case of Maui applications, the specific host utilized is a .NET generic host. If you want to read more on that, follow the links to the docs for a .NET generic host. And of course, you've seen this before if you've done any other types of applications in .NET Core. So in this demo, we're going to cover how the host works, how to configure it, as well as understanding of why these components work and what is needed to be able to use them. So prerequisites, go get the latest Visual Studio 2022 preview. You also need to include mobile development in the .NET workload. That's this. And make sure that Maui is checked off as well. Now, here's a little problem I noticed that my Maui templates were missing. And this is because I think the .NET 7 preview one that I installed last week was not good. Basically, I had to do this. Well, <laughs> I had to do this first, and then I had to go and completely uninstall .NET SDK 7.0 Preview 3. And in fact, I had to completely uninstall Visual Studio 2022 Preview and reinstall it in order to get back to MAUI and .NET 6. Happy days. All right, so let's create a new MAUI project. It's going to be a new Maui app, not a Maui class library, called Maui Program. And, uh, you know, traditionally, the host is being created in Program CS. And just to compare, this is a .NET Core Web API Program CS file, which uses the Startup class. But we're not using Startup here. Everything's in Maui program. Think of it as your program CS and startup for Maui apps. So I talk a little bit in this document about 
uh, Microsoft MAUI extensions and how that makes the whole MAUI system work. The host has a container with a collection of hosted services. So when the host starts, it calls start async on any class implementing the iHosted service interface. So I've added comments to the MAUI program CS. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into my MAUI program CS that I just created. And let's read the comments together. So the create MAUI app in this MAUI program is the entry point and it's called from each platform's entry point. So if you go and look at the platforms, right, you have Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst, Windows, and now we even have Tizen. These apps are what starts and then they call into create MAUI app to get the MAUI app for this particular platform. So we're creating a builder, a MAUI app builder, which is used to do all the configuration. So right here, we're calling use MAUI app of app, which is our main application, right? Defined in app XAML and app XAML CS. And now we can start configuring things. And right here, you can see we're configuring two fonts. We're going to add some more fonts later, but just to show you how this works, if you go to the resources fonts folder, there you'll see the two fonts that we're configuring here. They're right there in the resources fonts folder. But if you just look at the IntelliSense on configure, you can see we can configure a whole bunch of stuff. Animations, containers, dispatching, effects, essentials, fonts, image sources, and MAUI handlers. Today we're going to focus on just fonts and a logging service. We'll get into more of these other things in other episodes. Finally, the MAUI App Builder returns a MAUI App application from Build. Now you can see there's four references here for Create MAUI App. And if we just look at those, you can see that we've got one for each platform. All right? Android, iOS, Mac Catalyst, Windows, you can't really see the Windows one because it's below this scroll bar here, but you get the idea. Here's a graph that I took from the docs of the dependency map. So we start with whatever platform we're on. An app calls Create Maui App, in this case our Windows version, which goes to the Maui program and creates the Maui app and returns it. So in other words, each platform calls into MauiProgram.cs for configuration. So these fonts aren't just for Windows. These fonts would be copied for an Android application, for a Mac OS or an iOS application, or a Tizen application. But you only have to do it once. Yay! So let's create a service and add it. Now what is a service? Well, it's a class that we add that we can then inject into forms and access. So I'm going to start with an interface. It'll be called iAPI service. And we're just exposing a single string method called get test data. All right, so let's write the implementation for this API service.cs. All right, and I'm going to return a string hello at and whatever the current time is. Now, how do we add this into our application? MAUI program. And right here, instead of closing off this this builder statement, we're going to add a singleton. So we're going to say services add a singleton for main page and we're adding a singleton for the API service using the interface. All right, now how can we use it? Well, like this. Now I know that this is yelling at me, but that's because we haven't implemented the code behind yet. All right, so let's do the code behind. So you can see here I've changed the constructor to pass API service as that interface, which we are then saving the reference to up here in our underscore API service variable. And then on data clicked, we're setting the text of that counter label to test data and underscore API service. If it's not null, get test data. And then we're announcing it.
So I'm defaulting to using Windows. So let's run this and see what it looks like. And here it is. Let's click to see if we can get our test data. There it is. Hello at 1037, 20, 24, 25, etc. See that? Okay. So what else can we do? Well, I said we'd talk about logging. So in order to do that, we need a NuGet package. So I'm going to go to Browse on my source NuGet.org, and I want to find Microsoft Extensions Logging Debug. There it is right there. I'm going to install the latest. And now that that's there, let's go back to our MAUI program and wire it up. We're just saying to the services, after we've added the main page and the API service, we're adding the logging service. Just with add logging and the configuration, we're saying add debug. Another thing to notice is that I've got this using statement at the top here, using extensions logging so that it works. Well, how do we demo that? Well, we don't have to change any UI because all we're doing is writing to the console but that can be done here in the code behind file. Let's change it up. Got my using statement again. Now, not only am I injecting the API service, but I'm injecting an iLogger of main page. Right? And right there, I'm going to log main page constructor called. And whenever we ask for data, I'm going to log on get data clicked called. So in order to see this in action, we're going to have to watch the output window. All right. So I don't know if you saw that, but let's clear this out here and take a look. There you go. Main page constructor called. And now when we click, We see on get data click called. So there you go. There's logging and there's a service. And it works on all platforms. So I told you we'd mess around with some fonts. Let's do that. I'm going to open the resources folder, right click on the fonts folder, and say I want to open the folder in File Explorer. Now I'm going to open up another file explorer to the Windows Fonts folder. So in Windows Fonts, I'm going to search for the font that I want, in this case, Consolas. I'm just going to copy that into the Fonts folder. Now this isn't a file per se, it's actually multiple files. And you can see I have Consola. If I double click that, I see just a regular Consolas font. Consola B, which guess what? It's bold. Consola I, which is italic. And then Consola Z, which is bold italic. So just to be clear, I'm going to rename these. This one's going to be Consolas regular. with a hyphen. This one's Consolas Bold with a hyphen. Consolas hyphen italic. And Consolas Bold italic. Okay, now these are already in my application resources fonts folder. So let's have a look. Yeah, there they are. And if you look at them individually, first of all, your Visual Studio is going to complain, doesn't know how to show that. That's fine. But look at Open Sans Regular. The build action is Maui font, right? So I don't have to worry about copying to output directory, none of that. And it's the same for all of these. Maui font. By default. Now, interestingly enough, if I just go to main page XAML, 
And let's say I want my hello world to be consolus. So what do you think is going to happen? Hey, it worked. But why? I didn't actually add those fonts in Maui program. Huh. I wonder if it works the same way on the Android phone. So I'm going to change my framework to Android local devices and my Samsung, which is connected via USB. Now I've got to pull up that skr copy thing. So I've opened a console window in my skr copy Win64 directory. I just look. I can see that, yeah, there's skr copy exe right there. So if I type skr cpy, it tells me, ah, I need more information. If you want to use USB, you got to do dash D dash dash select USB. And there it is. All right, let's run it. Well, there it is. However, hello world is not in consolas. But why did it work fine in Windows? Well, it's because Windows is a system where the fonts are installed system-wide. With Maui apps, the fonts are installed in the application. Now there may be a way to install fonts on an Android system, I don't know. But our Maui app is only looking in our resources fonts folder. And because we didn't specify Consolas as a font in the system, it's not there. Right? So we got lucky with Windows, but not so much with Android. So here's what we have to do. Right here, we're going to add our Consolas fonts. So if you remember, I renamed these Consolas Regular, Bold, Italic, and Bold, Italic. We also have this optional alias that we can use. So we could say either Consolas-Regular or just Consolas-Regular. Right now, they're actually in the app. So if I change this to Consolas-Regular and run it again, that is definitely Consolas. Our test data still works, of course. But let's see if we can get this working on our Mac and Cloud as a Mac desktop app. And here it is. That's definitely Consolas Bold saying hello world as a native Mac OS application. Now we barely scratched the surface of what's possible in the Maui program class. We demoed some of the most common usages of it. So in the repo, there's more links here that you can use as resources. And uh, hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.